This video is designed to highlight the correct venting procedures and best practice steelwork design in order to achieve optimum galvanizing quality. When designing a structure that is to be hot dip galvanized, the design and fabrication must conform to acceptable standards. Venting holes will aid the access and drainage of molten zinc, allow air to escape, improve the quality of the coating and reduce costs. Certain fabrications may have holes present for other purposes that will fulfill the requirements of venting. However, in some cases, it is important that extra holes are provided. To ensure complete protection, molten zinc must be able to flow freely across all internal and external surfaces to eliminate any danger of hidden corrosion occurring. External stiffeners and webs on columns and beams should all have their corners cropped. The gaps created should be as large as possible without compromising structural strength. Angle bracings should, if possible, be stopped short of the main boom flange. Closed sections must never be incorporated in a fabrication. External holes may be positioned as in figure 4, a method which is often preferred by the galvanizer since quick visual inspection shows that the work is safe to galvanize. This footage shows what can happen to the galvanizing bath when an enclosed section has not been internally vented. Sections could be interconnected using open mitered joints, or interconnecting holes could be drilled before fabrication. Pipe ends can be left open or be plugged after galvanizing, and filing off flush with surrounding surfaces. Venting and drainage holes should be as large as possible. The absolute minimum hole sizes are given in Table 1 below. Holes for venting and draining should be diagonally opposite one another at the high point and low point of the fabrication, as it is suspended for galvanizing. With hollow sections sealed at the ends, holes should be provided, again diagonally opposite one another, as near as possible to the ends of the hollow member. In some cases, it may be more economical to provide V- or U-shaped notches in the ends of the tubes, or to grind corners off rectangular hollow sections. These procedures will provide ideal means for venting and draining. Where holes are provided in end plates or capping pieces, they should be placed diagonally opposite to one another, off-center and as near as possible to the wall of the member to which the end plate is connected. For more help and guidance, please contact your local wedge plant.